Hello, my name is Kelly Antone, Siemens HMI and SCADA specialist with PCC. In this lesson, I'm going to show you how to configure alarms within a Siemens comfort panel. So in my project, I have a TP700 comfort panel, and I'm going to go down to the HMI tags area and then look at the demo tag. So I have a tag table where I have a, a tag in here. It's going to be a word tag that's going to allow me to trigger my alarm conditions. In the HMI, you need to have a 16-bit word tag that, will, that you're going to be able to pick bits out of. So with a 16-bit word tag, you'll be able to configure 16 individual alarms per tag. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag the alarm trigger word out onto the screen. When I do that, it automatically assigned my alarm trigger word tag to the I.O. field. I'm going to come over to the format area and I'm going to change it, the format from decimal to binary. Then this way during runtime, I will be able to enter in four ones to trigger my four alarm conditions. Now I'm going to move over into my project tree under the HMI and I'm going to open up my demo tags tag table. So this is where my alarm trigger word is located. So I'm going to highlight this alarm and then in the middle window down below there's a discrete alarms tab. Here is where you're going to add in the individual alarms. The benefit of adding the alarms right at the tag level is the tag will automatically be selected for you. So I'll double click on add new. Then I will need to add in the alarm text. So I'm going to make it very simple and just say that the, my first alarm is going to be called alarm 1. When you do have the alarm selected, you do have the ability to fill in information in this table editor. Okay, so you can actually see the different columns that are available to you. Or you have the ability down in the inspector window to configure the alarm itself. So if I come down into the inspector window and I look at the alarm class, right now it is defaulting to errors. Errors require acknowledgement. And if I press the Browse button here for the different alarms classes, there's errors and warnings. Warnings do not require acknowledgement. So I'm going to just keep errors selected. So this alarm will require acknowledgement. I'll click on Add New again. And then I will add in my second alarm. So this one is going to be called Alarm 2. So now if we look at the alarm trigger tag, it also is selected, but the bit number has incremented. One thing I would like to point out here is this trigger address column is actually a read-only column. This column is going to be filled in with the actual PLC address of the bit that needs to be triggered for this alarm to be configured since we are picking bits out of a word. So that's a very important column to remember. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add in another alarm. This time, my text is going to be called, it's going to be warning one, because I'm going to create a few warning conditions. For the alarm class, okay, I can do table editing up here, so instead of errors, I'm going to select warnings. Now, this message, or alarm condition, will not require any acknowledgement. So I will add in one more, and we'll just call this one warning two. So now I've got four different alarm conditions, two errors, and two warnings. The next thing that I'm going to do is I am going to move over to my uh, underneath screens. I'm going to open up my alarm screen. So my alarm screen, this is where I'm going to be able to present my alarm conditions uh, to the operator. So in my toolbox over here, so I will select my toolbox and go down to controls, there is a tool that's called alarm view. So I'm going to draw an alarm view out onto the screen. So make sure I've got drawn out on the screen here. So this is my alarm view. There's going to be a toolbar across the bottom. There are some buttons that are available to you. The one over here on the far right hand is going, the right hand side is going to be an acknowledgement button. So we'll be able to use that to actually acknowledge our alarms. So when we drop the alarm view on our screen, when we look at the general properties underneath display, it's set up to display the current alarm state. So any new alarm conditions will show up in this window during runtime. So within the current alarm window, you will get one line per alarm, whatever the most recent state is of that alarm. The next tool that I'm going to add on the screen, I'm also going to go to my toolbox under controls, and I'm going to put another alarm view on the screen. This time, the alarm view is going to be configured as an alarm buffer. Now, under the general properties, I'm going to change the display from current alarm states to alarm buffer. Now, you, with the alarm view, you do have the ability to filter your alarm, so we've got errors and warnings. Um, you know, so those two boxes are checked, so my four alarm conditions would be visible. Now, with the alarm buffer, this is a history. 
So there's a retentive buffer inside the comfort panel so that it will retain alarm conditions. During runtime, this window will display alarm conditions as they occur. So for a single alarm, if an alarm comes in, it goes out, and it's acknowledged, you will see a line for each one of those states during runtime. Now, I want to make just a little bit more room available, so I'm going to make sure that I have my second alarm view selected. I'm going to go down to the toolbar area, and I don't need to have the toolbar visible at this point. So I'm going to select none. That will give me a little bit more room for my actual alarm conditions. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move over to the screen management area. There is an area that's called the global screen. The global screen, I'm going to open up the global screen, and that is going to be used to display a pop-up window on every screen in your application as alarm conditions occur. So when I open up the global screen, you'll notice that my toolbox changes and I just have access to the controls. And I'm just going to select an alarm window. When I pick the alarm window object and I draw that out onto the screen, this will be a pop-up window. So this is different from an alarm view in that this is going to pop up on the screen. So when I look at the general properties of the alarm window, it is set to current alarm states and unacknowledged alarms. So it's only going to be the new alarms that are triggered will show up inside this pop-up window. And I'm filtering the default condition is just to filter and only display the air condition. So warnings will not show up in this actual pop-up window. So now to test our development, I am going to select my comfort panel and I am going to start the simulation. So now my simulation, it's going to, or the HMI is going to start compiling, so we'll see my application compiling, and then the runtime will start. So I'll bring up the runtime in a simulation mode. I will go to my alarm screen, so I'll select my alarms button. Now you'll notice in the alarm buffer, there's going to be some messages that show up uh, right away. These are system messages, and the reason they don't show up in the alarm summary is by default, system messages will come in for a few seconds and then they will disappear, but the alarm buffer is actually keeping a history of those alarm states. So now to trigger my alarms, if I go into my I.O. field and I enter in four ones, so four binary ones, press enter, that will trigger my four alarm conditions. The alarm window popped up and it's being overlaid on top of my screen and it's only displaying my air conditions at this point because warnings don't require acknowledgement as well. So now when I look at my alarm view, the first object or my first alarm view on the screen, this is showing all four alarm states. They were all incoming states and you can see those states also show up in the buffer. Now I'm going to change my, or remove the alarm condition, so I'll put a zero in this I.O. field. That will remove all of the alarm states. My air conditions still show up in my alarm view because they have not been acknowledged. But you can see down below, um, now we have incoming and we also have outcoming alarms. So each alarm state is being represented in that alarm buffer. So if I select an alarm and I press the acknowledge button, if that alarm condition goes away, then that... <clears throat> that will also, or I should say, that will remove that alarm condition from the alarm view. So I've got incoming, outgoing, and acknowledged. So that A stands for acknowledged. I'll acknowledge one more alarm. And now all of my alarm states have gone away. So in this lesson, I showed you how to configure alarms on a Siemens comfort panel.